Here we go. All right, I'm with Steve Jels, uh, hometown guy, played, you know, about 10 years, almost 10 years in the, in the major leagues, Philadelphia Phillies. Um, but he also was in the backfield with me. And uh, we, we, we ran track. I mean, he would start the relay and I would anchor the relay. So we're going to start having some conversations of our time in Lawrence, Kansas, a college town, a big time college town. What's up, homeboy? How you doing, Michael? I'm doing all right. You, now tell the people where you are. Say it again. I'm sorry, sir. Where, you're in Pennsylvania. Where is Pennsylvania are you? I am uh, 20 minutes from Harrisburg, the state capital. Okay. Okay. Now talk so, about your talk, now talk about your baseball project that you've been you've been doing for a little bit. Well, what we have, we call ourselves Primal Sports and Primal Sports Charities. Uh, Primal Sports Charities is a nonprofit. Um, we are geared to advocating for young men and women. Uh, it's a multi sports facility we're trying to build that is uh, 150,000, 200,000 square feet bubble, 16 outdoor fields, including baseball fields, soccer fields. Um, football, you can practice there. Uh, the bubble has an indoor softball stadium that uh, you can play softball games in and youth baseball up to 13 years old. Um, a lot of our, 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 our motive and our mission was to get to uh, young men and women and advocate for them um, as far as their education process, mental health counseling, uh, we'll have physical therapy, and it's a big project, and we're just trying to do something that's going to make a difference. Let me ask you this. Uh, you know, you and I, we were talking NIL off camera earlier. Are you still able to get kids to want to play sports, especially baseball, the way it was in our time? Is it is it still the same today or you got to work harder to get the kids to come out? Well, yeah, that's a tough question, too. Um, it just depends on the, the, the logistics of everything. I think. At this particular point in time, I mean, with all the NIL deals and that, um, I, I think I try not to focus on what's going on outside our organization, but to offer a quality uh, resource for kids to have the full balance. As you know, um, I think it's like 0.0001% of kids that are trying to get to the, the uh, Major League Baseball or the NFL, or it, they're going to make it. Um, and again, that's a target on your back when you do make it. So it's harder to stay there when you get there than it is to get there, which is literally a shot is a needle in a haystack. So we try to, to educate kids and help them understand that they are something other than just an athlete and teach them how to be good, good Christian men and women um, outside of sports. I think that's key because a lot of the politics are played in this thing and and it starts at home. So. You know, that's what they don't have a lot. I think the country's in such turmoil right now that, um, like, we grew up and we had parents that are in the neighborhood, you know, in our neighborhood, if you messed up, that they got home before you yeah. got there. And there was yeah. discipline to be answered. You have to answer to somebody. And and right now, I think uh, parents are afraid to, to discipline their kids. They're afraid to give them what they need at home. And they're giving the children too much power, power that they can't handle at that age. And they're also... Too much of their friend that they'll rarely say no to something they want to do. Um, and let's just take it from the, from the sports perspective. Mom, I don't like the coach. Dad, I don't like the coach. You don't like the coach? Well, we'll go somewhere else. You, you right. don't win see, that way. You don't win yeah, that way. Yeah. But 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 when they see the Kyrie Irvings and the Kevin Durant's of the world who are bad boys want to trade after only a year with somebody, it's the same thing, but it's at a whole different level. But that's that the AAU kids of today, beginning ten years ago, I think I think the AAU coaches have too much say over their their over their players. I was I was gonna say student athletes, but they're only an athlete to the AAU people. And, and there ain't, no, ain't nothing academic. Ain't nothing academic about AAU. It's right. all about sports. And that that's part of that's that's one of the big problems. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, like when we played ball. You know, you went out and you played and you had a team in your neighborhood or whatever, like the yeah. Pinkney Hawks and the yeah. Cougars and the Colts, yeah. you know, our football teams. And, and they were in your neighborhood. You weren't recruiting on the other side of town and yeah. you went and played. And we didn't have a say. 
I, I don't think I ever even thought about that. And, you know, Dad, oh. I don't like to coach. I'm going so. Dad say you better shut your mouth and do what he told you to do. <laughs> I came home. Like well, I came home complain one day. We had to practice on Labor Day. You know, everybody else is chilling on the you know in the boats and queuing, and we out there working out, practicing. I came home and complained, and my mom was like, "Well, you ain't got to do it." So that that was all the sympathy I got. You That's ain't got to do it. That's the, yeah. so and, and see, you got more than I got because my dad said if you start it, you're going to finish it. So don't even go. <laughs> if you want to play, you know, the man Sergeant Major told me, go out there and play. Keep your right. mouth shut and do what you need to do. And and I think more of that, uh, there, that's too much entitlement. We can get into that issue. Uh, that That's probably what's, what's a lot of the problem right now. And I, we're just giving uh, kids too much power uh, that, they, that they can't handle at this point. They, they aren't they aren't um, seasoned, educated, and matured enough to handle all the power that has been handed down to them. And that's causing them um, confusion. You know, as a young man, you can't have the power that a grown man has because we've been through a lot of things and we know the correct decisions to make, but they don't. Well, you know, Deion Sanders, he said it, uh, I think, succinctly when he said, you start paying college players – you better be ready to handle them because they're going to start acting like pro players and college coaches are not equipped to handle players with a prof with pro at with a pro mindset because they're getting paid. I mean, um, what if you have to make an appearance and part of your NIL deal says that's what you got to do. That's part of the deal. But you got to practice on Tuesday afternoon. You know, I mean, which way are you going to go? Which and where's the coach going to want you? The coach is not going to want you to go take care of your NIL obligation. He's going to want you in practice on that Tuesday. Exactly. And that's there's going to be a conflict of interest down the road that's going to happen with the NIL, because which it probably already is. We just don't know about I, it. We just don't hear, haven't heard about it yet. But at the end of the day, the coaches, as a coach, you need to stand firm. And, I mean, I understand, but those things have to be worked out between uh, the administration and the NIL because – you these are decisions that you can't even put a kid in that position. A lot of times if they decide they're going to go do that, it's going to hinder their process, their progress oh. in, in at, with their coach. Their coach now isn't happy with them, obviously. You didn't come to practice. You'd rather go make money. How do you think you're making this money? Because you're playing football. So why aren't you here? That, that's what's going to happen. So And the difference is the difference is the kid in all likelihood doesn't have a mortgage. But the coach does. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Too. That's a deal breaker yes. right there. Right. You know, and I, I, you know, and for me, it's I'm old school, Mike, just like you. And and for me, I, I'm not concerned with that. Uh, you know, I, that's why I try to do my own thing, because you have to have morals and you have that set of standards that you have to go by. And if you concentrate on God's love that for these children, that's what you need to concentrate on. And all these other things that are getting involved in that, that's what's hindering the process. You know, I, I think if we concentrate on on educating these children, making sure they're mentally mentally healthy, and, and there's a lot for them to deal with at this time. When we grew up, we did, we went out and hunted and fished and played ball in the field and, you know, did whatever we could do. We didn't have the Internet. The with, more active with, uh, we were, the better off we felt we were. The more exactly. we, we, were, we were active. We were very active. You know, yes, we did. We didn't. Have, we didn't have the internet. I mean, I mean, Pac-Man was a big revolutionary thing. Yeah, back it was. Wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, and you know, mom didn't have to tell us to to to, to uh, go outside. The, no. I, my, the, the words that came out of my parents' mouth was being being when the street light comes on, you better be home. But they didn't have to tell us to go out because we were gone as soon as the sun came up. And, and even so in we're the out winter, there doing something. Even in the winter time. Exactly. Yeah. We Even in the in rain. The, in the rain, the snow. We didn't snow. care. We were just out. Yeah. And then we well, had a good was, time doing it. Well, we were active. And that, and that was the one thing that I think they're active today, but social media is so involved in their lives. I mean, that's the problem. A person, I mean, when we were coming up, Whoever you hung out with, that, that's all the approval you needed in terms of friends on the playground, all right? Right. But now with social media, youngsters today, they want to get likes, you know, and they're not really likes. Right. People don't really, they're not really your friend. That's just, they're yeah, a virtual so friend. 
Yeah, they're yeah, a virtual exactly. friend. They're a virtual. Right. I'm talking about a real friend. Somebody you're playing tetherball with. Somebody you're playing kickball with. You know, right. getting in trouble in, in school with that. That's that. Those are your friends. But when it comes to social media, that's all virtual stuff. And I spoke in a class one time. And, uh, uh, bad little kids too. Ooh, they were bad. High school kids, middle, middle school kids. And a kid asked me if I was on social media, and I told him yes. And then he asked me if I was verified. I'm like, I, I, yeah, I'm here. I'm verifiable. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, social media don't verify me. Oh, exactly. I verify me. So what I got out of that was he was going to be impressed if I was verified because of something. Because you know, I don't know if you've seen that. If there's a check mark by your name, it's blue. Right. You're verified. I don't need well, a check. You, know, you know, I haven't seen it because right. <laughs> us, us doing this task is 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 verification for me. Just like you said, we verify ourselves. And, right. And I mean, I think you know, as, as far as a social media standpoint, I mean, I'm I'm older now. But you know, we're we're over our sixty now, over sixty now. And yeah. when we played, a lot of these kids don't even know who we were unless you right. were. Uh, Mike Schmidt or Bo Jackson or somebody like that, you know, I'm supporting cast. I can play the games and I can play them all and play them pretty well. But at the end of the day, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I was supporting cast, which, you know, your, your chain's only as strong as your weakest link. So you got to have supporting cast. But well, that's what these kids are willing to be. Everybody wants to be the superstar, wants to act like. And, and that's another thing, Mike, that, that comes up is that is that the, the taunt and, and the, the celebrations in professional sports now and, and collegiate sports. This is the role models for these kids. And that's not since when if you did humiliating your opponent in, end up in this game, in any game, in any sport. How come you can't just have success and win with dignity and respect? That's that's my thought. Well, that, that, that's just kind of world we're in now. And the thing is, when you um, you think about the uh, – I mean, they even – the NFL, they took out showboating, and then they put it back in. You know, yeah. when you get – so you get – so, okay, the score is 13 to, 13 to 10. You got the interception. Now you all got to go to the end zone. Go, look at me. I got the interception. Uh, it's like – then you lose down. the game. And you lose – yeah, yeah you're still down, and you lose the game. You yeah. lose the game. You yeah. Know, and, you know, and, and, I, and I see when we played, we couldn't do that. When yeah. we played, it was a penalty immediately. I, well, if I, you spiked the football, it was a penalty. I, it never dawned on me. You know, I never, never thought about on, it. It never dawned on me until I saw Elmo Wright do what he did in the end zone. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. But you don't do that. You didn't do that at the high school level. You know? No. You, you get the well, ball. Coach Freeman, you, Coach Freeman yeah. wasn't having that. Oh no! I no, guarantee no it. Way, and that's no just way. how we were raised, and it was that. But you win with respect, and 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 act like you've been there before. I think that's my number one motto with yeah, these kids. Yeah, you know, right. you don't you don't need to do all that. And I think you get in your opponent's head more if you if you act more professional. And I say act professional. I'm talking about the old school professional, not what I'm seeing today. You know, don't you know if I, I see guys hitting home runs and stand at home plate. And are rocking their baby and all that other nonsense I'm watching on TV, and that's not part of the game, you know. And and it, now it's a part of the game. But when I played, if you did right. that, the guy that came up to the plate, the, Nolan Ryan, standing on the mound, and you hit a home run, then you start rocking the crap. He might chase you down, <laughs> but <laughs> but at the end of the day, the next guy that comes up to the plate's getting one yeah. in the side, and then you yeah, come back up and you're getting one. And you know, it's thinking, dang, dude, why'd you do that, man? Yeah, they are. Yes, you know, your I'm teammates want to be, oh, man, no. shoot. You know, well, I was it, talking to, we have to get Milt Thompson on here. I was talking oh, to Milt, I played with Milt in Philly, and, and we had, we spoke uh, last week down in New Jersey at a college, and and Milt said he, he was a rookie, and he came up against Nolan, he said, and he was leading off, and so Nolan goes out every game with the idea that he's going to throw a no-hitter. And and Milt dropped down a bunt on the he's leading off the game and dropped down a bunt and everybody on the bench went, Oh no, oh why did he do that? And Nolan walked up to him when he walked up to the when he came up the next time, he walked up to him down the home plate, walked down there and drew a line and said, No more of that. <laughs> so so it was it, that's how the game was played. We had respect for that because Nolan's coming after you too. Like, you know, Randy Johnson, I can remember him. Uh, you know, Roger Clemens, the whole Atlanta staff, Smoltz, Glavin, Smiley, Maddox. I mean, you, you, Sid Fernandez, Oral Hershiser. I could go on and on and on. You didn't, 
disrespect pitchers back in the day when I played. Yeah. So, I mean, well, that celebration thing was something I learned at, at an early age back when I was playing high school football with you. We just didn't do it. We had well, you know, and, and another thing is I'm, I like LeBron. LeBron is tr fantastic. He's all that. But you would think, and I don't think this is the case with us, I think we had a sense of history of uh, sports athletes. You know, we knew about Jim Thorpe. I, I talked to a kid here recently. He was, you know, because he was a versatile kid. He did this, he played that. I said, man, you just like Jim Thorpe. I said, wait a minute. You know who Jim Thorpe is? He says, no. I said, you need to look him up. And I guess my point is, we knew about guys like him that were 70 years ago, you know, and I wonder today, I wonder today how many major league young guys know who Jackie Robinson is. I don't think, right. I guarantee you, it's not even it's not even 30 percent, not even 30 percent. Right. Right. Yes, I understand. And, you know, if you look at the, at the sport and, and, and the way things are going, I mean, I'll tell you one thing that really shocked me was I was watching the World Series and I hadn't seen it before. I, you know, because I, I watch baseball and I kind of analyze the games and I can kind of tell what's going on. And I'll tell you, Dusty Baker, he knows Dusty Baker because he's playing old school baseball, won 106 games and and play consistent baseball, but um, consistent old school baseball. But I saw the interviews of players during the game in the dugout. Oh, my goodness. That's something that a reporter wasn't allowed near us. Oh. You know, an hour, an, hour, an hour after batting practice, an hour before the game, all the reporters are out of there, and we need to concentrate on our job, what we're getting ready to go out here and do. And then, you know, when we, when we finish a ball game, we sit down in the clubhouse and we talk about what we should have done, what we could have done differently, right. win or lose. We're talking about the game. That's where you win championships is in the clubhouse after the game and before the game. Now when you go down, you see guys walking in the clubhouse and even to high school level. They got headphones on and they're sitting in the corner and they're not even communicating with each other. How can you become a team if you don't gel in the clubhouse and on and off the field? You guys need to hang out together and be a team. And that's what we used to do. Well, listen, man, I'm glad we got a chance to talk about this. These are the kind of topics we're going to be touching up on. And it's not a uh, get off my lawn kind of thing. It's about comparing eras versus today. Um, it's like, for instance, real quick, did you hear about the Alabama basketball player? There's an yep. Alabama basketball player. They're, they're ranked number two in the country. His teammate says, bring the gun. He brings the gun. The gun is used to kill a 23-year-old girl. Now, Alabama is a no permit needed carrying state. And the police is like, well, he didn't break the law because we don't know, we can't prove that he knew the gun was going to be used to kill somebody. Now, as someone pointed out, well, in New York and New Jersey, he's an accessory. He's an exactly. accessory. And he got to play. He's, okay, since this, all, this information came out during the testimony of a detective, and ever since that testimony came out, which was just Tuesday of last week, he has played in two games. In the first game he played, um, he uh, scored 41 points, sent the game to overtime, and won the game in overtime. And then he played uh, Saturday night, 26 points, seven rebounds. Now, here's where, here's, here's where a cat and even his people around him, family and coaches alike, can't read the room. Before this murder thing happened, his little pregame routine, you know how LeBron does the, the powder and all that. This guy's routine was he'd come, he's only a freshman, he'd come out in the locker room and one of his teammates turn around and pat him down like police do suspects. Well, wow. the two games he's been back, that's happened. And so finally, the coach on Saturday said, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. That it's inappropriate. Well, it was inappropriate the first time he came back. Right. When he played when he played Tuesday night and he did that and you and now you're catching on to what he's doing? I mean, show a little respect. Read the room. I mean, there's already enough questions. And, and what about I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. And what about the what about the, 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 the victims in that incident? Exactly. The family. They're watching the him victims. out here, the families of, of, of the victim and, and they're out there, he's out there playing basketball like nothing that didn't matter. And, you know, and, I don't understand. Uh, you and the know, thing so, is, he's, he's, well, the thing is, he's got the support of the law, support of the school. They like said Alabama's number two in the country. He's, he'll probably get some votes if he doesn't become the, the MVP of the NCAA. 
and that's going to be hovering over his his you know his his presence. Right. Why ain't that the dude and, that and took, the sad, took the gun? Yeah, the took the gun and shot somebody and killed him. Yeah, the sad part about that is you know he you know all in all I mean it's just misguided information that gets them to that point. It's misdirected focus on uh, uh, on your goals and and just the lack, the pure lack of, of, of Christian belief in, in, in Jesus himself. You know, we, this isn't how we were supposed to act. And then things don't work well if you don't go along with his law. So you know, that's one of those things that I have a problem with. I'm just like, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated and have respect for people. And life goes very well. And I think we're being taught, uh, the kids are being taught, you know, as you watch what's going on in the world, they're being taught not to. And 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 it's and it's it's the people that are above. It starts at all. This starts at home. This starts at home. This starts at the top and, and filters its way down through. And that's what they're saying. It's just like the role models. I can remember Pete Rose and I walking in the in the stadium one day, and they were they were talking about doing a drug test. That was at the beginning of the uh, uh, steroid epidemic. Right. And and we didn't, you know, we didn't do steroids. It was like we were we were the last of the breeds that didn't do it. But right. at the end of the day, Pete just said, he said, you know, you guys, they said you guys are supposed to be role models. And and Pete said, I'm supposed to play baseball. And they asked me who my role model was. And I said, my role model was my dad, and my brother and my mama. I said, you know, I, I, I don't I, I will come out here and I will be a good role model for you because of the way I was raised. But right. I wouldn't say that any child should. You don't know how you don't know. The athletes you're seeing on TV, you don't know who they are other than them being an athlete. And so that can't be your role models, and that's why I say this all starts at home. This starts at with your with your junior high and high school coaches and teachers, and and if you focus on that and not on the street, then you'll turn out to be okay. But if you start focusing going down the wrong road, you're going to end up in the wrong lane. So. I'm Michael Coleman. This is Steve Jones. This is two thirds of Voices of Sports. We're going to be doing this from time to time. This is a little pilot here. So, homeboy, good talking to you. We'll, we'll talk again. And uh, this is what we're going to be doing, my man. This is what we're going to be doing. Good talk to you, Mike. It's good to reminisce. We'll get into some get into some things pretty deep <laughs> next time around. All right, my man. I'll holler at you. I'll talk to you later.